Hi, my name is Eric Ruckman, and today we're going to be starting a new course that covers the entire AP Computer Science A curriculum. I'm aiming this course at both high school students who are taking the AP Computer Science A class and people who are trying to get into Java and dabble a little bit into programming. Java is the most popular programming language in the world right now. It's being used by most enterprise developers, and it's just a great language to start out with. Um, a little background information about me. I have been programming for just under five years now, and I'm currently 18. And I also work as a software engineering intern at So yeah, it's gonna be a great ride, and I think you'll learn a lot, hopefully. Yeah. All right, so to be able to write code, we're going to need what's called an IDE, or an Integrated Development Environment. And one of my favorites, for students at least, is called BlueJ. It's extremely simple, it's easy to visualize, and there's not a lot of extra tools that, for example, an enterprise developer would want. Um, this is great for learning the knowledge and just being able to write code and run your stuff. So I've already got it installed. What you're gonna do is uh, pick your platform, install it. If you don't know how to install a program, you shouldn't be on this course. Yeah, so, all right, now we're gonna open up BlueJ. This BlueJ. Select that. And. Bam, done. Get this dialog box, and we're gonna name this my first Java class, or my first class, whatever you wanna call it. Just don't call it Hello World. I'm tired of that. Open this up, you're going to see a ton of starter code that you don't know what to do with, so we're going to get rid of all of it. And then here, we're going to tab over, but not too much, and type public static void main. And we'll go over what this means in another video. But essentially, this uh, anything we put in here will get run in real time as the program executes. So we're gonna do some cool stuff with it. All right, now that we're set up with our main method, we're gonna go ahead and talk about variables. And I love variables because they're necessary. It's the way we store data in our programs and you can't do anything without it. So to go over the primitive types, uh, we're gonna have to talk about numbers. And we have a couple different ways of storing numbers. We have integers, which are positive and negative whole numbers, and we use the keyword int for that. And then after the word int, we give it a name. So my number, let me change the capitalization there. And we can either set it equal to something now, or we can leave it like this. And what this does is it tells the computer to reserve that memory for my number but it hasn't been given a value yet. So we can give it a value later, or we can set it equal to something now. So we're gonna set that equal to five. We can also do long, which is just like an integer. It's gotta be a whole number, positive or negative, but it's got double the memory. So we can have exponentially higher values. So we're gonna call this my big number. And this is gonna be equal to 500. And then here we can talk about decimal numbers. So can this work, please? Please? Yep. There's floats. Uh, floats are not used a ton. We're going to call this my float, and this will be equal to 5.5f. If you use a float, you need to put an f at the end, or else it's going to think it's a double when you use a decimal. You say, what's a double? Let me get to it. A double is a float with double the memory, just like a long. So double my double, and we just do 5.5 here, and there's no errors. If we got rid of the F, you would see the error pop up, and it would say there's a lossy conversion because it thinks it's a double, but it's actually a float. Uh, we can talk about lossy conversions in another video. This is not in the scope of unit one. Um, so here's some primitive types. We also have a few others, such as chars. These are characters. My char equals f. And you use single quotes when you do chars. As we get into strings, you know, text, we'll do double quotes. 
And then we also have booleans, which are extremely important. They only hold the value of true or false. So boolean my bool equals true. Or it can equal false. Or it can equal zero, which will be false. Or one, which will be true. If you assign your booleans with numbers, I'm gonna make fun of you. Moving on from here, we also have assignment statements. Um, we've already done assignment here. You see we're setting the equal sign and then giving the variable that we made a value. We can also do it separate from when we create the variable. So if I wanted to go back and change my number to something, I just do my number equals four. And then if we wanted to see that change happen in real time, we would do system.out.println and we don't need quotes, we just need my number. Okay, so it's gonna print the value of the variable. And just to show you that it actually did change, right before we change it to four, we're gonna do it again, system.out.println my number. And the reason this works is because the compiler works from top to bottom. So whatever statement we put at the top will get run before the one at the bottom. It's extremely logical. We're going to save this file, move over to here, right click it, click compile, this will get the code ready, and then we'll click void main blah blah blah. You see 5 and you see 4. Okay, so now that we've touched on primitive types and assignment statements and printing things out, we can talk about expressions now. And if you've ever taken a math class, you probably know what I'm getting at. With expressions, we can simply do math inside our code. So right now I'm going to create two different variables. Int a is going to equal eight, and we're gonna have an int b that's equal to two. Actually, let's make this three, and you'll see why later. System.out.println, and we'll do a plus b. A plus three is gonna be 11. So we're gonna save this, bam, right here, compile it, main at our console and you'll see 11 is right there in the third line now if we move back here and we can do you know subtraction division all the other operations that you thought were possible um, one that I did not know about until I got into computer science is modulus division and this will just return the remainder from dividing two numbers and that's the reason I changed this over to three so eight divided by three will give us a remainder of two and to show you this, we're gonna save the code, not switch over to the stream window, and get that, you'll see the remainder is two. Awesome. All right, the last two things I wanna go over to wrap up unit one are compound assignment operators and casting. So with compound assignment operators, it sounds really complicated, but it's not. We're gonna create a variable here, and we're gonna call this C, and call it six and then if we were to do c plus equals six that's our compound assignment operator what this does is it essentially is shorthand for c equals c plus six okay and nobody wants to write all that out programmers are efficient not lazy so we can do plus equals, minus equals, uh, even the modulus percent sign equals, and it'll do all those great things for us. And just to show you that, we're gonna do another print line, C, save that, bam, bam, compile. How fast am I gonna get at this by the end of the course? 12, why is it 12? We called it six, then we did plus equals six. Bam. Moving on to casting. Uh, casting is interesting and we're going to talk about it more in the future as we get into objects but um, when it comes to primitive types and casting just know that if something takes up more memory you do not want to cast it to something that takes up less memory for example if I have a long I don't want to change that into an int and I just realized that I didn't explain what casting was fuck Okay, now with casting, it's not magic. You're simply changing the type of a variable to act like a variable of another type. 
For example, if we wanted to divide A and B and we wanted to get a decimal out of it, we would need to change those into either floats or doubles. So here we're going to make a double, call it D since we used C below, and we're going to cast both A and B to be a double. So we're gonna do A divided by double B. And there's your notation for casting. You'll uh, put the type that you want in parentheses right before the name of the variable that you're trying to cast. And then here, if we want to print that out, it should give us a decimal number. We saved our file, we're gonna compile it. You know the drill. And there we have a decimal. We'll talk more about casting in the future, especially as we get into objects and what works with casting and what doesn't. But for the most part with primitive types, um, you can cast most primitive types to other primitive types. For example, a char can be casted into an integer because it uses Unicode for translating numbers into characters. All right, that's gonna wrap us up for unit one. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit me up with that like button and leave your feedback in the comments section. I'm trying to tailor this course towards you guys, the learners, because I don't really matter here. And if you have any suggestions, no matter how extravagant, I'll try and make that happen. Um, even if it's something like, you know, delete your channel, jump off a bridge, I'll consider it. Yeah, once again, thank you so much for sticking with me through this and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that stuff. I will see you in the next lesson.